Hi, I'm Ben. Welcome to any Apple Drops. Have you ever been uncertain about uncertainty? Me too, man. Me too. The uncertainty principle is a core component of quantum mechanics, but it arises just from the simple nature of waves. In essence, it says that the better you know something's position, the less well you know something's momentum, or vice versa. The argument for this actually comes from what we talked about last week, the idea that if we have a simple wave, like a sine wave, it has a very definite momentum associated with it. But the thing about a sine wave is that it is periodic in nature and continues forever. So saying anything about where it is in space at any point in time isn't necessarily the most meaningful thing. What we can do, however, if we want to describe finite waves, is add a lot of these sine waves together and become more and more certain about the wave's position but as a consequence of adding all these momenta together, we become less and less certain about what the actual final momentum of this wave packet is. One other thing we said last week is that if you want to know how to actually build your wave, you can do something called the Fourier transform, which returns to you the necessary frequencies and their relative amplitudes that you need in order to build this wave. And what I was wondering is, can we use these small bits of information to somehow probe the uncertainty principle and get it to sort of reveal itself to us in a way that we can actually see physically unfold. So today what we're going to do is an experiment. And there's actually one last piece of information you need to know. You need to understand that as we pass light through a lens, what that lens is actually doing at the focus is taking the Fourier transform of the light's intensity profile. And now what the intensity profile is, is if you can imagine looking into a laser beam, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, you might understand that maybe the center of it was slightly brighter than the outside. That sort of shape of the overall brightness is the intensity profile. And the lens takes the Fourier transform of that wave shape and returns the frequencies needed to use it. And it returns it in such a way that low frequencies are near the center of the focus and higher frequencies are towards the outside. My thought is what happens if I try and remove some of these higher frequencies by sort of filtering them out of the focus. Surely I should be lowering the amount of momenta uncertainty by taking some of the frequencies away and thus must be increasing the positional uncertainty. So maybe I expect to see some sort of blurring or something in the final image that I produce of the laser beam. Anyway, I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work, but it might, so let's have a go. Okay, so let's get started. So um, what well, first thing we'll need obviously is a little bit of laser and for that we will be stealing some from the interferometer. Uh, and the color of today is blue because why not? So the laser will exit here and propagate along a flat beam through where we're going to put our optics. So the first thing to do obviously is the core component of what we want to do which is focus the laser so that we take the transform of the intensity profile. So for that obviously just what we need is a lens. This one's about 75 millimeter focal length and we're going to place that just in the beam's path whilst placing our goggles on because safety uh, and the important thing to do is make sure that the beam goes through the very center of the lens otherwise we get weird aberration effects so what we've done now is place a lens in the beam path which is focusing the laser to a point at this focal point we should be taking the Fourier transform of the beam's intensity profile so what do we want to do now? We want to find a way of blocking those higher frequencies which should be towards the outer part of the focus. So what we're going to use is a pinhole. And the pinhole we're going to use has two components. The actual pinhole part of it, which just opens and closes, and the XY stage, which it screws into and allows us to make sure it's in the center of the beam. And all we're going to do is place this at the focal point of the laser. So now what we need to do is to re-expand the beam so that we can actually see if we've had any effect on the beam's profile. And to do that, we just recollect it with another similar lens. Right, so this part is the actual workhorse of our experiment. It's doing the part we're trying to study. Now we just need a way of imaging what's actually happening to the beam. So what we're gonna do is reflect it and then pass it through two lenses, which will basically act like a microscope and expand the actual beam profile so we can see a little bit better what the intensity is doing within the beam.
Okay, and so just to review again, what we've done is we've taken our laser beam, we've passed it through our lens, which should take the Fourier transform of the beam's intensity profile. We've placed that incident on a pinhole, which we're gonna to use to filter out the higher frequencies, which should be in the radially outer part of the beam. And we then re-expand it with another lens. We reflect it off of a mirror, and we pass it through two more lenses, which expand the beam so we can actually see what we're doing. Right, so now we're ready to go. So just so you understand that last step that I did, uh, I was using two lenses to broadcast the beam into the far field. And I'm gonna place the image that it creates on a sort of slanted plane, which has the effect of stretching out that intensity profile so I can better see what I'm actually doing. And here's a picture of what the camera will be looking at just so you gain sort of an understanding of how I'm taking the recording. So let's look for a second at this actual image. And you notice that there are bright and dark bands that are very distinct and move sort of radially outwards. What we have to ascribe this to, if we want to think about the uncertainty principle, is a lot of positional certainty. So this must correspond to a lot of momenta uncertainty, or the idea that we have built this shape, this shape of the intensity profile, from the summation of a lot of different sine waves. So I guess we've come to the sort of moment of truth, the moment of the big reveal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close that pinhole over, and what we should see is that as I decrease the number of waves which are used to describe this image, we should lower the amount of momentum uncertainty and so increase the amount of positional uncertainty. So what we expect to see is those bright bands sort of blur. So if you're ready, good, I'm ready. Okay, you watch the image and I will close the pinhole in three, two, one, go. Oh, hello science, nice to meet you. That's cool. It's not every day that you get to see the uncertainty principle literally unfold before your very eyes. I'm pleased with that. I hope I have made you a little bit more certain about the uncertainty principle. And so I leave you with a quote from the man himself, Heisenberg. The universe is random. It's not inevitable, it's simple chaos. It's subatomic particles in endless, aimless collision. That's what science teaches us. But we're very good at working it out. I'll see you next time. Bye.